Over many years, I've used the figure in a landscape scenario in an attempt to record an evolving sense of figurative presence. Having previously put aside a well-understood execution of perspective and picture space that failed to account for something vital to experiential encounter, I deliberately only allowed aspects of form that I felt to be meaningful with respect to the realisation of the missing elements. The missing elements were not going to manifest from mere development of the existing toolkit. Given the rather introverted nature of the pursuit, and to be honest the difficulty I had in approaching the situation, I took to recording pictorially the news items of the day, alongside, forming the landscape. This explains the subject matter here, the specifics of which I want to put aside for the purpose of this presentation. The juxtaposition of styles of representation is obviously very significant here. The rendition of the news item is pixelated, and I hoped optically consistent enough to qualify as pictorial. Its execution is mechanical, process-driven, and ultimately optically derived. There is inevitably a lack of context, both spatial and in terms of the story. I've resorted to adding the gas mask motif to provide some of the missing information. It does a job. It tells us about what is out there. But there's nothing about the receiver here. Nothing about how the scene was encountered. From other vision space presentations, we understand that there is a structure underpinning the phenomenon of vision and that there are processes of imperceptible information exchange taking place within it. It's the combination of these factors that leads to the saliency of vision. In this rendition of Phenomenal Field, both the head and the eyes are fixed straight ahead, looking at the vase. In the painting I wish to discuss in detail, the head is pointing forwards, but the eyes are looking slightly to the right and up a bit. Fixation is on my daughter's head. The rendition of datasets here is broadly consistent with those that underpin the structure of phenomenal field, and by that I mean vision. Vision is entirely non-photographically rendered. Other vision space presentations look in detail at all the fundamentals, so if questions arise without explanation here, please refer to the links at the end. Vision space indicates that vision is compiled from two independent data potentials that occur to us on a monocular basis realized independently through the two visual pathways. Fundamental to the generation of vision appears to be an all-possibilities field. What do I mean by this? I visualize a field potential, a state of waiting on, a system whereby every possible spatial outcome can materialize out from. Not in the sense of a blank piece of paper that can hold any type of mark, but in the sense of all possible outcomes being booted awaiting fleeting realization within. In terms of phenomenal field, this system of presentation dominates in what is commonly referred to as peripheral vision, representing around 90% of phenomenal field. The field efficiently sets out, within its compass, where things are in the environment. Space is implied directly from the data set. Spatial awareness not being akin to what we currently understand as 3D, resulting from binocular fusion technologies. Experiential spatial awareness realizes proximity cues relating to distance from a setting out point, typically aligned with the optical focus of central vision. The field is radial in nature, emanating from the selected fixation point, and therefore not related to depth of field. Depth of field produces a horizontal plane of focus in the xy axis of pictorial space, this falling off to a function of optical blur, forward and behind the focal plane. The field structure of vision is radial, falling off to an incrementally increasing degree of disordered data, proportionate to actual physical distances in the real setting or scene. This system of spatial rendering forms a unique spatial texture denoting x, y and z coordinates. So in this instance the fixation is on the head of my daughter Hannah. In this presentation, I'm not going to consider what's occurring in central vision beyond identifying it as the outcome of the what pathway, dealing with objective form. I'm also supplementing true disorder with simply the size of brush mark. This produces a rather coarse form of spatial texture, but still capable of carrying the spatial values. Now let's explore the extents of this field and the spatial cues it affords. We're not making a 2D pictorial representation 3D. We are replacing pictorial structure with the structure of phenomenal field that's generated by perceptual structure. 
In the underpainting, we saw the various diameters of Prussian blue blobs appear across the dark space. The black area is only indicative of the extents of phenomenal field. The percentage in appearance of the different sized dots is intended to be broadly random, apart from around the fixation point, which just helps me a bit as I introduced finer detail in that area. The first point to notice is that in the far background the dots remain randomly allocated. The sky, the coastline of Wales and most of the Bristol Channel. These areas fall outside the range of proximity cues set out from the head. Spatial values start to appear in the field at a distance encompassing the rocky outcrop behind the figure. Here the marks are of the same size, large, and themselves made up of smaller individual blobs. If we then look at the green sea marshes, we can see smaller scale marks, and the closer we get to the figure, so the size of the marks reduces. Finally, as we move up the figure, the marks reduce again, until we lose them entirely, moving into the independent rendering system with its own set of cues operational in central vision. We can see the grading process also realised in the rendering of the small breaking waves. In the far distance, rendering is just a few dots, these dots being the same size as the subset dots forming the extremes of spatial referencing used on the rocks. As the breaking waves get closer to the observer, so their relative size increases. Note, however, that their proximity with respect to the fixation point doesn't change that much as they curve around the shoreline. So their rendering with respect to disorder value remains quite constant and within the terms of the largest value and its subsets. The inverse is seen in the rendering of the straight line trajectory of the poles that close proximity on the fixation and then open out again. We now need to consider in finer detail how the system operates across the sea marsh with respect to rendering forms within the grasses. To recap, the WHERE system specialises in spatial awareness and not the realisation of objective form. However, as we close from the edge of the grasses, the associated reduction in size of mark starts to allow for the delineation of individual grass stems. In addition, the closer to the observer we get, the bigger the blade of grass appears, and hence demarcation of form takes place even with larger brush marks. Detailed and objective form within the field increases the closer to fixation and also the closer to the observer positioned within the field. I believe there's a link here with the realisations apparent in the work of Van Gogh. The size of the drawn mark remains almost constant at depth throughout pictorial space. Light radiates from the sun and the clouds and terrestrial distances form within its light field. Within the cottage garden, it's what the line denotes in the landscape that changes size. The length of the line or the size of the squiggle remains constant. The lines of the distant mountains are the same as the middle ground lines denoting roof or the palings of the gate or the length of the grass in the foreground. It's a different strategy being adopted here for sure, but it's still providing a spatial cue indicating an awareness of the issues on behalf of the artist. The strategy he adopts actually fails to deliver a designated fixation or actual proximity cues. The associated spatial value is inaccessible to the viewer without recourse to the mechanisms of pictorial space. We have to understand the pictorial space and then the size of the mark used to donate a form takes on a spatial value. The spatial reference is not independent of pictorial cues and the consideration of objective form. The spatial texture is entangled within it. We can also consider the perceptions of planes or surfaces within the field structure. Here we see that a leaf of the screen is demarked in space by the increasing size of the brush strokes. There's a spatial gradient. The values embedded in the mark donate the surface, not the pictorial depiction of the form that each mark may contain. In this case, we have conceptually and explicitly appreciated the structure behind the system by using central vision to assess a number of areas and then consciously constructed an understanding of what's going on. However, this is not how we naturally form and deploy these cues within the phenomenon of vision. The entire field is simultaneously understood, unconsciously appreciated. This spatial understanding is implicit 
and embedded in the field data set, providing a holistic sense of space. Our primary form of spatial awareness is comprehended without us attending to it through central vision and the WAP pathway. We are aware of the spatial arrangements of the scene as we look at the vase forming the intended fixation. In fact, this form of spatial awareness is prior to awareness of form being generated in central vision. Finally, we can consider how our nose supports awareness within phenomenal field. With some organisation, we can of course remove our arms, legs and bodies from our field of view, but our nose and to some extent our eyebrows are fixed assets. Through these protuberances into phenomenal field, we are automatically embedded within our visual presentations. The structure of the field, set out from fixation, always providing some indication of our proximity with respect to fixation. In the painting, we can also appreciate how the nose could be providing indication of direction of gaze. While the head is pointing forwards here, our eyes are looking to the right. Hence there is more of the nose rendered in the right eye visual field and less in the left eye field. Vision space is a new form of illusionary space, revealing that picture space, perspective and optical projection are at best only half the story badly told.